Hi, this is Dust Fox Mom, and welcome back to Let's Play Tunnels and Trolls. I've returned to Kost and sold off a little bit of jewelry and I think a war hammer that Yuda didn't need anymore because he had Jorinir's sword and Magnus check to see what the old stone was good for and basically you can use it to poison weapons if you want otherwise it's a complete waste of space and nobody will give you money for it so Magnus just dropped it and we've actually been going through the great forest paralleling the road so we could avoid the highwaymen and now we're about ready to enter Tallymark which is at this road junction. So let's go inside. You stand at the edge of the small unwalled village of Tallymark. The buildings are low and simple in their construction. The whole village appears to have been treated most unkindly by the hordes of Leotra. Many buildings stand empty. Do you enter Tallymark? Okay, let's see where we are. Looks like we're on the north edge of town. And let's see what we can see. You find yourself at the mouth of an alley next to the Blue Bat Tavern. A big man is hunched in the shadows, crying like a child. He notices you and looks up at you in abject sorrow. Do you approach the man? Sure. The man wipes his nose on his sleeve, then haltingly he speaks. I can't go back into the tavern. I can't look at those monsters anymore. Oh, Fela, my poor little daughter. He gasps shivers. And then seems to gain his composure. Uh, my apologies, he says. I'm Kynal, the owner of Yonder Tavern. It was once a wonderful place until Leotra's foul hordes overran Tallymark. A terrible change came over our city's once beloved Viscount Freyak. He became cruel and strange, roaming the streets and snatching young girls from their families. He killed any who dared oppose him. We were going to flee, my lovely daughter, and I, when the Viscount came into the Blue Bat and took a fancy to her. His minions beat me senseless and they took her. Sweet Pipistrel, she's only fourteen years old! He looks at you for a moment, and hope creeps into his miserable eyes. Please, stranger, will you help me? What do you answer? Yes, no, or something else? Uh, I don't know what else to answer. Um... Hmm. I don't think he's the one we're supposed to say dragonfly to. Let's just say yes. Kinda lowers his voice to a whisper. I like you, stranger. If you return Fela to me, you'll receive more than my eternal gratitude. In the back of the tavern's an ever filled keg of beer. Not just any beer either, but rock troll beer beer, both rare and potent. Bring me back my daughter and the keg's yours. The home of Viscount Freyak lies at the south end of Hummingbird Street, which is the very street that fronts the Blue Bat. May the luck of the gods go with you. Uh, just a minute. And we're back. 
Yeah, Lost in Blue just came back from a walk. So... I guess the owner of the blue bat wants us to rescue his daughter from the count. So we need to go to the south end of Hummingbird Street. You have come to the end of Hummingbird Street. You are looking at the rough stone wall of a large building. On the ornamental tiles that line the roof, you recognize the crimson griffic, the standard of the House of Freyak. You now stand on Green Dragon Lane, which runs parallel to the wall. Okay. Not quite sure which end... Okay. Well, Lost in Blue. Uh, we just ran into the owner of the Blue Bat Tavern, which is located in the northeast corner of Tallymark. And he tells us his daughter has been kidnapped by the Count. And I've heard rumors that there's some vampires inside the Count's mansion. It's Count Dracula. He's going to turn the daughter into a vampire. We'll have to kill her, and then we'll have to tell the sob story to the Hmm, person. maybe. Let's see, I think we've got two uh, vampire javelins, no, which we'll might help. There we will find out that the Count's a vampire. We'll rescue the daughter in typical heroic fashion. Or something like that. That's my guess to how this is going to turn out. Okay. <laughs> okay, I'm going to give the one vampire javelin to Yoda. And I think we'll have him... Let's see. Uh, let's have him equip Jornier sword in one hand. Or how about the vampire javelin in one hand? Vampire javelins in both hands. That's a possibility, actually. And a chakram. And then Sinead will have her unequip her heavy longbow. And we'll have her equip the vampire javelin in one hand and the chakram in the other hand. And hope to goodness we don't have to fight anybody but vampires until we get to the vampires. Okay, I'm going to save this in a different save position. Let's see if we can... Okay, this is... Green Dragon ends at the edge of the town and a narrow alley goes behind the Viscount's manor. Set into the stone wall is a huge rough wooden door. Let's see if we can get in this way. The door swings open at your touch. It's very dark inside, and you can't see the bottom of the sharply descending stairs as you start down them. Oh, joy. As you near the bottom, you see a lovely young girl, hardly more than a child, She's dressed in the finest silks and jewelry, but she's bound to the wall by golden chains. 
She puts a finger to her lips to ask for your silence, then gestures for you to come closer. Okay, golden chains probably mean that it really is Fela, but we'll do as she asks and just approach the girl. The girl takes your hand in hers. Her little fingers are warm. Well, that's a good sign. I'm Fela, she whispers. Yonder sleeps my captor, Frick. She points to a huge marble sarcophagus with a tiny gold key sitting on top of it. Go quietly and get the key, for it's the only thing in the world that can unlock my chains. Do you do this? Yeah. You make a misstep and kick a small stone. It hardly makes a noise, but it's enough. The lid of the sarcophagus flies off with a crash. Viscount Freyak leaps out like a maddened dog. Leave the girl, for she's mine, he hisses and lunges for you. Okay, well, if he's a vampire, at least we've got the vampire javelins equipped. And... Okay. Okay. Okay, we'll have Sinead cast Cat Eyes. Then we'll have Arwen cast Take That, You Fiend. And then we'll have Yoda. Oh, and he didn't even use the vampire javelin, just a check from. And it worked. Fela has count found the golden key and has unlocked her chains. Come, she says. She f My father waits for me. She shows you a staircase at the back of the room and hurries you up toward the back door. You stop just in time, where there's a sheer drop just in front of the door. It isn't very wide, and you jump it over, over it with ease. Fela smiles at you gratefully. Return me to my father at the Blue Bat Tavern, he sa she says, and he'll reward you most handsomely. Okay. Well, that worked. So I guess we'll take the young lady back to her dad. That should be the tavern there. You stand at the doorway to the Blue Bat Tavern. The fine hardwood door and stained glass windows would lead you to believe that this is a very nice place. The voices within, however, are loud and raucous and many of them don't sound human. Do you enter the tavern? As you walk through the finely carved door of the Blue Bat Tavern, all eyes turn toward you, many with none too friendly intent. All sorts of human lowlives and degenerates glower and leer at you from the tables. The barmaid skirts around them nervously, trying to serve them their beer while staying out of reach. Two nasty-looking dwarves look you over and whisper rudely. Three goblins are singing a bawdy ballad and gobble. As soon as they spot you, they jump up and down on their table, trying to get your attention. A half-orc bar gestures for you to come over to his table. A huge, ugly ogre loudly challenges you to an arm wrestling match. The bartender, a harried-looking young man with a red beard, seems more than happy to see some non-monster patrons. Do you leave this ugly scene, approach the goblins, approach the half-orc bar, approach the arm wrestling ogre, or approach the bartender? Uh, let's go to the bartender. Look, Humphreys, she says, they're not hoarded beasties. Oh. Hush, Melissa, he says. That's not polite. Oh, strangers, it well met. What's your pleasure? Do you order a beer or say something to Humphrey? Well, we did meet Dragonfly. 
Humphrey has led you into the back room of the tavern. Along with the kitchen, along with the kitchen, there's a polished hardwood table with six luxurious leather cushioned chairs around it. Sitting on the table is an ordinary looking keg of beer. This, says Humphrey, is a very special keg. Not only does it contain pure rock troll beer, but it's a magical thing and will never run dry. My master, Kynal, offers it a reward for the return of his daughter, Fela, held captive by the fearsome Viscount Freyak. Would you care to sample its nectar? Uh, sure. But... Brave souls, laughs Humphrey. Now, would you like it full or half strength? I must warn you, it's most awesomely potent stuff. Oh, yeah, I think Dragonfly warned us that it would knock you flat on your keister. Let's try half strength. You take a slug of troll beer, and it burns like liquid fire. Your eyes and nose run, your face flushes, you break out in a sweat. As a matter of principle, however, you down the entire concoction. Humphrey's trying very hard not to laugh. Would you like another brave one, he asks. Uh, no, thank you. Suddenly, the back door swings open with a crash. A huge, hulking figure stands in the doorway. Fakari! Gas Comfrey was obviously terrified. The huge warrior strides into the room. I'll have that keg, little man, he snarls. He reaches out to grab it. Please, cries Humphrey. Don't let him take it. Do you attack Fakari? Order him to stop or do nothing? Oh... Let's attack him. You catch Vakari by surprise, but he's still a terrible opponent. Okay, and apparently the... Okay, well, that was quick. Bukhari lies dead at your feet. Humphrey's ecstatic. Stranger, I can't thank you enough. Says, without this cake, my master would have nothing to offer as reward for the rescue of his daughter. Humphrey pauses. I don't have much to offer you, but I do have this. He slips an unusual-looking ring from his finger and hands it to you. It's a magical ring, which will make any attack on your foes with a dagger twice as damaging. I pray that you'll choose to rescue Fela. Good luck, traveler. Look, Fela right here! Just need to turn her over to her daddy. Okay. Well, let's give the dagger doubler to Arwen, I guess, because she's got the daggers. Uh, where is that? Okay. J. V. She's got that equipped now. Oh, she's got the dagger doubler and the cat ring and the spell regal. Okay. Do you leave by the back door or go out back out through the tavern? Let's try the back door. Let's see if we can find Mr. Kynall. And, yeah, Kynal was waiting in the alley. And he gave us a beer cask. Okay. Well. Now there's supposed to be more vampires inside. Count Freyak's manor. We could go visit, or we could skip. Um, there's supposed to be a wizard's guild in this town somewhere, I think. We can go down here. This might be the Wizard's Guild. The Wizard Guild of Zykork. May I help you? And she's got one would be NPC there. Oh. 
Oh my! She's got some really potent spells. Some that I haven't seen elsewhere. Well, hang on. I'm going to have Arwen gather the party's money. I don't think she's got enough money to learn any more spells right now, though. Rats. Well... Yeah, they're supposed to be an abandoned rogues guild in town, too. I think... Yeah. We'll try the north end of the Count's mansion. See if we can make use of the vampire javelins in there. And it got dark. Okay, I think the vampire ladies might be in this room. Okay. There we go. So where's the vampire ladies? Okay. Maybe... You don't have that encounter anymore if you've already taken out of the taken out the count. Well, I guess we'll leave Tally Mark and maybe head north in the next episode. See you then.